in the first one what will uh, the output will be uh, the where is a, a global scope or a function scope so what will happen is it will uh, 0 to 14 it will go and at 15 it will stop so it will print 15 15 times whereas uh, here it is let so it is a block scope so it will go from 0 to 14 so it will print 0 1 2 until 14 it will print so here it will be 0 to 14 for let 1 and for where 1 it will be uh, for where 1 it will be 15 15 times it will print so how many ratings you are giving yourself for the javascript uh, out, of out of 10 7 7 you can say okay so is javascript is working synchronously or asynchronously 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 yes okay so what is the use of async and await so uh, await function what it does it wait for the promise so yeah so it wait for the promise and it can be used uh, like it is used in async block only so in short what we can say uh, await function it it is used inside async block and it is used to wait for the promise uh, let's say uh, i have i have created one function like a user detail function and inside okay. that function, I am just calling one one of the API service that is the user information. And I okay. have I have added the keyword await for this user information API. So okay. is it compulsory to uh, make a outer side of the function like user details as a sync? No, we have to write a sync. Await can't be uh, in included without a sync. So a sync must be there. Or without that, I can still call the user information API. No, it won't work. Okay. What is shallow copy and deep copy? Uh, so deep copy, what it does? Deep copy stores the copies of the objects value. Stores the objects value. Whereas shallow copy, it will store the reference of the object. So what happens in deep copy? It won't. Uh, so Suppose if there is a change in one object, it won't reflect to the other object. Whereas in shallow copy, it is uh, other way. Like if any change is done to any one of the object, then it will reflect in other object because the reference is seen in shallow copy. Okay. Let's say I have one variable like a user details and if I want to make a deep copy of this, so how can I do that? Like, so what we will do, user details is there. So, uh, what we will do, uh, like, we will create another uh, as ABC. So, like, whatever const ABC equals to JSON.pass. Inside that, we will write JSON.stringify and whatever the variable you, you said is user details. So, we will write JSON.pass inside that JSON.stringify and then we will write uh, user details so that's how we will do the deep copy okay what is event loop so in event loop what it will happen is uh, so it is used to handle the different kind of tasks and execute the tasks and so on so uh, it is responsible for those event loop so what event loop does normally is like there are synchronous and asynchronous star so it will try to first execute the synchronous star and once it gets completed then it tries to pull the asynchronous stars and executes one by one so that is the rule of the event loop what is the uh, difference between single threaded and multi-threaded so single threaded and multi-threaded as uh, so multi-threaded what it happens <laughs> so multi-threaded uh, it will execute the task concurrently whereas single thread it will execute the 
execute a single task at a time so that is the difference between multi thread and single thread okay this template literal a template literals what it will do uh, so suppose there is a, so it is used to combine the expressions uh, so for example like uh, take a const name is equals to abc and uh, if you want to uh, print that uh, whatever uh, like hello abc if you want to print then we will write console dot log uh, in bracket in quotes we will write hello and inside that uh, we will write uh, dollar in braces we will write name and we will uh, close the console log so what it will print uh, hello abc so it is it helps us to combine with the expressions so that is nothing but a template it reads. what is destructuring destructuring uh, what it helps is it helps us to uh, take the values from the arrays or objects so for example like if there is an array uh, const abc equals to 1 2 3 4 5 and so what we can do uh, we will write const a comma triple dot b is equals to 1 2 3 4 5 so it will take 2 3 4 5 in b array so that is the rule of destructuring okay <clears throat> what is higher order component higher order components it will take uh, a component as an argument and returns a new component so for example like for toggling or for uh, expanding the options menu options so for those purposes we can use higher order uh, components or for highlighting or unhighlighting the text for those kind of purpose we can use uh, higher order components okay if uh, have you heard about the hooks yes which are the hooks you are about so with the help of, so hooks they are nothing but a simple js function and with the help of hooks we can use different features states life cycle methods with the help of uh, different hooks like for state management purpose we can use use state the use effect we can use with uh, to perform side effects uh, for example like mounting updating uh, component mounting component updating and unmounting purpose so yeah so uh, to use these features uh, hooks were introduced in functional components what is the use of useref so it is uh, the useref what it does it allows us to use the same value between renders so uh, and it, it it can be used to access the DOM elements directly. So for that purpose, we use use ref. Okay. So, have you heard about the use effect? Yes. So <clears throat> if I want to call the use effect each and every time when the page render or state and props changes, so how can I define the use or the effect? So at that time what we will do we will write use effect uh, then there will be a function and then there will be a dependency so whatever the dependency uh, whenever there is a state or prop chain so that suppose there is a ch uh, state chain we will write that state in dependency so that's how we will define use effect function and then dependency whatever the state or props is there okay okay got it <coughs> what is debouncing so what it helps it delays the uh, it helps in delays the execution of the function so it will provide a certain time uh, and for that time it will delay the execution of the function so for that purpose we use debounce okay so you have used the redux or not yes so have you uh, used Redux in your current uh, the project which you have mentioned? Yes. So how I can implement the Redux? 
so what we will do in react type we will uh, so we will run the first uh, the redux we will run like npm install redux then we will create a fo uh, redux folder uh, like we will create a redux folder and we will create inside that folder different files like redis store action okay so before that we will uh, provide like uh, in uh, in the code what we will do imp import and uh, provider from react redux so these are the starting steps like firstly we will install uh, npm install redux then we will import uh, import provider from react redux and uh, we will create a folder uh, with the help of uh, name redux and inside that we will write the uh, the components of redux like redux store action so these are the few steps to uh, implement the redux okay <clears throat> okay so thank you so much for your time i am done from my side thank you okay thank you